a lesson that's really stuck with me. And it's one of the ones that helped me kind of write my book on the prayer powered entrepreneur is realizing that God most wants to grow my business by growing me. And he most wants to change the world by changing me. So I sit in my prayer chair and I say, bring me lots of clients or bring me this contract or help this all fall together or open those doors. And God is saying, yeah, but I want you to become the kind of person for whom this is possible. Welcome back to Crafted Entrepreneur. In this episode, I'm so excited to have my friend and mentor, Kim Avery, back on the podcast. She's an entrepreneur, author, and a coach who helps Christ-centered entrepreneurs build their business as they partner with God to change the world. So we're going to dive deep into how she's built a successful coaching business that has lasted decades, uh, the biggest mistakes that some coaches make, and we're going to talk about shifts that coaches need to make to scale to the next level. Plus, we're also going to dive in deep to the Proverbs 31 woman and what that means. So Kim Avery is on the show, and she actually calls herself the original accidental entrepreneur. She has decades of experience as a counselor and coach, and today she helps Christ-centered entrepreneurs build their businesses as they partner with God to change the world. Last time I had Kim on the show was in 2018. You were one of the first people I had on my podcast. And I actually went back and listened to that episode. And it was so good. We talked about, you know, just God's view on money and having Christians be rich. And so much has changed. And I'd love to catch up with you, Kim, and see what's new in your world. Oh, well, thank you for having me back. And I'm excited to have this conversation, uh, especially as we think about building Christ-centered businesses, because it's very different than just following the world's model and the world's wisdom in everything we do. We actually are partnering with the all-knowing, all-powerful, all-resourced God of the universe for his agenda. And as you can imagine, we want to do things a little bit differently. So I'm excited to have these conversations today. Yeah. Aww. see, You guys, you'll see, you'll want to listen to this entire episode because she's just somebody to just glean so much wisdom from. So you're in the coaching space. I have a lot of coaches that are listening in right now. And, you know, I feel like it's really easy in the coaching space to start comparing yourself to what every other coach is doing out there, which comparison is the thief of joy. And that's not something we're called to do as Christians. What have you done to stay centered in Christ and just focus on what God wants you to do in your business, not what other coaches are doing, but what God wants you to do. Yeah. I, if there were a magic answer, I would, I would have you write it down and send it out to everybody. <laughs> but I do think in all honesty, it is a battle for all of us because we are trying to build businesses. So we're out there, which means we're watching what other people are doing, which makes it very hard to not compare saying, oh, this brought her success and this is what helped him have a breakout business. That must be the secret recipe. And so again and again, I've just got, the minute I can feel it, my heart starts fluttering and I get a little tightness in my stomach and I think that's not Jesus's voice, right? That's Kim trying to work out her will in her way, in her time. I, I don't know if you ever can notice in your body, Kayla, but I mean, I can literally tell when I'm going about it my way. There's this, this anxiety thing that goes on. And so it's just back to, no, if God knows everything and God has called me to do this, let me just have a conversation with him, slow down and be faithful. If we are faithful, we will be fruitful. So instead of worrying about trying to make it happen, I want to worry about being obedient and faithful. And then it's up to him to make it happen. Oh my gosh. Okay. So be faithful and then you will be fruitful. I love that. What does that look like in, in real life? Because sometimes I wonder, I'm like, okay, you know, in order to be faithful, we need to be following God's will for us, right? And trusting his plan for our life. But sometimes, like I know I hear from people, but I don't know what God wants me to do with my life. What do you say yes. then? 
It, it is so true. And actually, God's had me in a season recently where I was wrestling with him once again. Lord, there are so many things in the world that I want to do, that I could do, that the world needs, and I'm just little old me. And I'm sure you've heard the story in your own head time and time again. And he really reminded me to not despise the day of small beginnings, as he says in Zechariah. Just he doesn't have to show me all the steps until I'm obedient with this step. And then he'll show me the next step. So instead of sitting in my prayer chair and spinning and wishing he'd show me the whole plan, why would he do that, Kayla? Because then I wouldn't need him. I, I guarantee I would go off on my own and make it work. <laughs> instead, he, this is a partnership with him. And so most of the time, I mean, I've got the big goal. This is what we're moving towards. And then just the next tiny step, write that email, have that conversation, post that blog, do the podcast. And then, yeah, it just becomes so much simpler. I almost feel guilty about it. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love that. It, when you break it down like that, it's like, okay, that sounds pretty simple. I think I could do that. But I'm a visual person. So what does your like prayer time look like with God? And like, you know what I mean? I think I've heard from people about their war room and like how they spend time with God every morning. I call it my CEO time. But what does it look like for you? Is it like a specific time throughout the day that you're spending with God and strategizing over your business? I have a goal. Well, first of all, let me start with a little bit of background. I used to really stress about this because I know people, and you probably do too, who are prayer warriors. I mean, yes. the calling is prayer. They intercede for other people. They stay up all night. They pray and fast. They do prayer walks around Chicago. I don't know. You know, they're just these amazing people. And I think but God's called me to run a business. I really, I've got to worry about the bottom line. I've got to worry about the people who are working for me. I've got to create content. I have coaching clients. How can I do all the things? And so I really believe that prayer looks different for entrepreneurs and that's okay. So I absolutely positively want to start with some time with him in the morning and just listen, like pen, literally pen and pencil in hand. You're the boss. Talk to me. What's on your agenda for today? But other than that, my goal is to talk with him frequently throughout the day. So if I can give you my best example of this, imagine that I were going into finances or investing, like I know that you're really heavy into that these days, Kayla, and doing an amazing job. Congratulations. But imagine if I were doing this and nobody wants me to do this. I'm really bad at this. But Warren Buffett heard about my, my desires and said, oh, Kim, I really want to support you. Um, in fact, I'm so invested in your success, Kim, I'm going to put a chair right next to your chair all day long, every day. And if you have a question, if you need a resource, if you need a connection, you just turn to me and I am there for you, Kim. And then imagine I showed up every day and I said, hey, Warren, gave him a high five and ignored him. Mm -hmm. Functionally, that's how I was treating God for so much of my entrepreneurial life. I would pray in the morning, kind of do a go team, go God, and give them a, basically a high five and then just dig in and do everything by myself versus I'm still working on my business all day long. But before this conversation, Lord, help your glory to shine before, you know, I'm perhaps working with a potential client. Lord, show me what they need, how to best phrase this for him. So just take every little thing all day to him. And it really doesn't take tons of time, but it's so... Again, he's smart. It's such a more organic, spirit-filled, peaceful way to live. Well, and that's really what it looks like to be in relationship is yes. you're talking all the time. You're in communication and it's building up that intimacy with God where you really feel him right there and you believe he's going he's gonna to answer and that he wants to make it easy for you. I love that picture. I would love to have Warren Buffett right next to me, but even more. But we have God. We have the almighty God next to us. That's even better. It's even better. Better than Warren Buffett. <laughs> it really is. Oh, my goodness. So how did you know it was time to move from counselor to coach? It was just, yeah, that's a tougher one. I think the Lord just really captured my heart with the vision of forward movement. So counseling has a lot to do with what's gone on in the past, which is incredibly valuable. And we all need to deal with our past, don't we? And heal from our past because we all have wounds. But there was just a point in my life where the Lord started having my eyes kind of look down the road. And coaching is such a ripple effect type of thing. If I can help one person, one healthy person live 
Christ-saturated, joy-filled, purpose-driven life pouring into others, that doesn't just impact them. It impacts their family and their neighborhood and their church and the marketplace. And so it's hard not to get excited about that. Oh, my goodness. I love the way that you put that. I recently just experienced like deliverance. Um, with a pastor, like a deliverance prayer. It took like oh, several sessions. What's your beliefs on that? Like deliverance instead of counseling? Because, you know, I had gone through talk therapy for some stuff and and I felt like the same. I was like, I'm actually more agitated after going to like this therapist. I was like, I'm, I wasn't that mad, but now I'm like I'm really annoyed and I don't know how I'm going to move past this. And I was praying and my friend said, oh, you need to talk to my pastor. And it's been like, life-changing for me, but I want to know what your thoughts are on deliverance. Oh, that, that almost makes me cry. Such a gift. God is so good, isn't he? Um, but it, it kind of goes back to he has a unique path for all of us. So I do think it's incredibly valuable for some people to be heard. Some, some of the pain, some of the wounds we all carry, they deserve a witness. They deserve someone to see them and grieve them with you and honor that before we can heal from it. And that's incredibly valuable. And then there are other times and other things and other people, you know, who is just like, I'm just done in Jesus. This is just a divine moment. It's almost like healing prayer. Just sit with them and where is God in this and how can he bring you this healing? And Again, he's just so kind and gentle, and he wants us to heal, and often he meets us there as well. Mm, okay, I love the way that you put that, that our pain is is powerful when it's witnessed by another, and sometimes that is what people need, is just to feel justified in how, how they felt in certain moments. Yeah. yeah, life is painful these days. I know. I just, I don't like it. I, I <laughs> I don't like the pain. I was getting a massage yesterday, which I shouldn't complain about, but I was praying like, God, give me downloads. And and he totally gave me this visual. It's like, this is painful. You know, my lower back, I've been having issues. And he's like, but after the pain comes the change, right? So you have to like move through that pain. If you sit, sit there it's only going to get worse. So like you have to have the pain get worse for a second and then the light like opens up and you're feeling better. And I think he was showing that to me, like, as just my life right now, like I'm in it, you know, I feel like I'm in the refiner's fire. And I know a lot of people listening in right now are in that moment too, where it's like, God's just like taking out all the impurities. And it, it sucks when that's happening because <laughs> you see, gosh, I have a lot of impurities inside of me, <laughs> you know, but I know you, I mean, you've built up this incredible business and you haven't gotten there without pain. Uh, what have been some of the hardest like moments of, of your entrepreneur? career? Oh, wow. Wow. There have been so many. Um, Being an entrepreneur, to everybody who's listening, just thank you for the work you do in the world. This is hard. It is, it is glamorous, right? I mean, we do get to choose our own hours. We do get to lean into our strengths. We get to choose the projects and the people we work with. And it's an incredible blessing. But we work longer hours, wear more hats, face higher expectations, and experience more disappointments because of the incredible risks we take than I would say your average employee does. And it, it takes a toll. So whether it was starting my business or, like you said, anytime the Lord transitions me, there's just a huge learning curve. I think the lesson that's really stuck with me, and it's one of the ones that helped me kind of write my book on the prayer-powered entrepreneur, is realizing that God most wants to grow my business by growing me. And he most wants to change the world by changing me. So I sit in my prayer chair and I say, bring me lots of clients or bring me this contract or help this all fall together or open those doors. And God is saying, yeah, but I want you to become the kind of person for whom this is possible. If my contributions ever outweigh my character, Kayla, we see this all the time on the news with pastors and world leaders and movie stars. When their contributions outweigh their character, their lives implode and explode. And God loves us way too much. I'm like, Lord, please never allow that to happen. And so, yes, there's pain. But, you know, God God whispers in our delights and often he shouts in our pain. And so it's a good chance to just lean in and to hear who he's calling us to become. You brought up your book, The Prayer Powered Entrepreneur. It's 
so good. We're going to make sure to have that link in the show notes. So everybody listening in right now can buy at least five copies because you're going to want to give them away to your friends. Sharing is caring. So what made you write this book? Like who were you thinking was going to pick it up every day and how was it going to help people? So selfishly, I wrote it for myself (laughs) because I realized I was doing life and business all wrong. Well, that's a realization. And so I'll never forget. I was sitting there. It was somewhere around 2018, 2019, and I had this terrible flu. And it was it was a weird flu. It wasn't so sick that I couldn't think, but I was so sick that all I could do was think. So I just sat there all during this Christmas season thinking, which it's always a good time to think. And I was looking at my business and looking at my clients, and I thought, you know what's interesting is we are Christ-centered entrepreneurs. God is our CEO. And I'll be honest with you, most of our businesses, most of us don't look much different than anybody else's. We're just as worried, hurried, and stress, and the kinds of results we're getting are just very similar to anyone, anywhere. And I thought, what is wrong with this picture? Um, So it really sent me on a search through scripture. Lord, what did you promise me? He has promised me, like he said, in this world, you will have tribulation. So I I need to be real about that, right? That's one of the things he's promised me. But he's also promised so many things to us, scandalous promises. We can be joyful no matter the circumstances. We can have peace when all around us is chaos. We can have grace for any and every gap in front of us. And so I just ended up collecting 31 of those promises. And I began, this is about hmm, four years ago now, praying just one of those each day of the month. And starting all over again and again, Lord, I can pray these and confidently then just one small prayer a day and just watch how he's working. Just watch what he does. So I'm not confused by all the things. I'm just watching for one thing every day and the way he's answering my prayer. And it's really helping me lean in and cooperate with him. So anyway, having done all that, I decided, oh, this might be useful for other entrepreneurs as well. (laughs) So it ended up in the book, The Prayer Powered Entrepreneur. I love it. And I I was telling you before we got started that I've been giving it away to friends. And I feel like it's one of those books that you keep picking up, right? So it's not one of those ones you're going to do for 31 days and then put it away. It's something that it gives you I like a to-do list. It helps me feel safe. (laughs) And so knowing, oh, I have something to pray about and um, guidance sometimes when we feel like maybe a little lost in what we want to, what we want in our business, you know, and to be reminded that we do business differently than worldly entrepreneurs. Um, When social media is so loud and I'm actually on, I'm taking a social media fast, you know, because I feel like that. I'm like, I need to be separated. Like it's separation season of where God is like taking the Christian business owners. So I love that your book is a tool for all of us. Now, we know that like I ha- I think having the right community and mentors for us as entrepreneurs are just as important, like I think as our personal relationship with God because, I mean, and you can disagree with me on that, but I think God wants us to be in community and he doesn't want us to do this alone. How do people find the right community so that way they are not led astray? I know that happened to me for a while. I got in the wrong masterminds and I started getting into some new age stuff without even realizing it. And now I'm very like mindful. I'm like, you know, new age. And I I pray it away, you know, but other people like they kind of, they just don't know what they don't know and, and they need to be in the right community. So how, how can they find that? Mm, It's such a good question, and it's shockingly hard. Uh, So those who are listening who are struggling today, I just want to say, please, please keep at it because you're right. We were not created to do this alone. We were created to do this in community. Uh, Romans 12, 6 says, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. In other words, I can only do the things I can do well. I can't do what you can do well, Kayla. How am I going to learn the things I don't know if I don't sit and have this meaningful conversation with you? Um, And so some of it's trial and error, but again, I would just encourage people to pause and listen to the inner voices it creates. Is it making me more anxious, more peaceful? Am I striving? Our shepherd's voice is quiet, but it's unmistakably kind. Not that he doesn't say hard things, but it's kind and it's gentle and he's leading us toward God, not toward self-sufficiency. 
And so I think when I check against those things, I can think, yeah, this, like you said, this just wasn't feeling right. I could tell. I didn't know. Trust, trust that feeling. Mm, so good. Trust that feeling. Trust that feeling.